If you can't get out on the water, here's a great way to dial in your Mega Live. Winter is kicking in here and it's pretty cold today, so I'm going to spend my time practicing on simulation mode in the garage. As you've just seen, it is a cold day and it's windy to boot, so I am not going to go out and try and practice with my Mega Live. Since Mega Live is activated by the two wet switches, it can only be used in the water, so I can't practice at home unless I put it into simulation mode. And that's exactly what I'm going to do in this video today. I am going to show you how to practice and dial in Mega Live in simulation mode. Please remember, there are no magical settings with Mega Live or any other form of sonar. It is gonna vary day to day and body of water to body of water, and even sometimes within a given day. So don't rely on that set it and forget it mentality. Let's fire up the Humminbird unit here and we need to get this into simulation mode. So I'm waiting for the first menu to come into play here and you'll see what I mean. See, it says press menu for startup options. I press it and then I go from normal down to simulator and then exit to continue. And now it is going to be in simulation mode. For those of you who are concerned about playing with your Humminbird units in simulation mode, there is no need to worry. At trade shows, this is how the units are run in the booth at all times. The simulation mode is not going to do any damage to the transducers. So enjoy the learning curve as you watch the video. And as always, if you find this video to be enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. You need to have a compatible Humminbird Helix or Solix unit that will have a MDI Plus or SI Plus G3N or later. And it must once again have that plus and you must have the software update 2.660 or higher with your Helix to make this work. To get to the Mega Live view, I'm gonna press and hold the view key and I will have the sonar option come up and I am going to look down and I'm going to find Mega Live View. I'm going to scroll down to it and then I right click on it and there is the Mega Live View. That current view is in down mode. Simulation view is going to give you an example of what Mega Live can do. For example, you can see some structure down here. It looks like a, a lay down in here. And you can see the structure coming up in here. And you can see a group of fish in here. You can see the bait. Oh, and there was a fish just came up to hit that bait. Another one just came up to look at it. So you can see the fish and how they are reacting and behaving to the bait. So it gives you a high quality image so that you can work towards that image so that you will have quality images yourself. I would also like to make you aware of the accessory tab. So if I go into menu, menu, and I go from the tabs at the top and I go across to accessories, I'm going to go down here and you will see that there is a mega live tab right here. And as I mentioned in my last video on the Humminbird Mega Live install and setup tips, there are some control head things that you need to do. Let's just quickly re explore those. It is going to show you Mega Live pinging, but the one that I wanted you to focus on in the last video is the Mega Live installation. And I right click on that and it shows the installation depth this is not the unit that i have hooked up to my mega live so it has not been set up yet if i were i would have to set the installation depth and i can just change this so that's at two feet three feet and on my unit that i'm actually using mega live which i've had out for about three or four hours so i am still working on dialing it in and using the simulation mode is going to help me familiarize myself with all of the tools in here and just play with it so that 
I can dial it in and see what it can and can't do in simulation mode, and that's going to help me when I get out onto the water. I set my installation depth at three feet on my trolling motor because I have a 52 inch Ultrex and it was approximately three feet from the surface of the water down to the transducer. My installation is a starboard installation because the Mega Live is on the right hand or starboard side of the trolling motor. And this is interesting. The Default setting for this use AHRS. When I was actually on the water for my few hours, I was playing with it off and on. And I know from reading the manual that on pitch and roll is helped featuring a stabilizing of the bottom. And so I for sure am going to, next time I get out on the water, hopefully before winter sets in, and I'm going to put it on pitch and roll because that is going to give me a stabler bottom and should make it easier to read. So already by playing in simulation mode, I just learned something. For those of you that did not see my video on the Humminbird install and setup, you will need to be aware of the fact that when I first went out, I did not do this Mega Live installation, which is the setting up of the control head. And I had some freezing on my Helix unit where the Mega Live would just freeze up the image and I couldn't do anything with it. And then I remembered from reading the manual that you were supposed to do this Mega Live installation and setup of the control head. And once I did that, I have no longer had any freezing of my Humminbird Helix unit. So there was definitely user error on my part. We are still in the accessories, so I'm going to hit the exit button. And when I hit the exit button, I want to go up to this heading right here. So we're going to go up to interference rejection. And the standard default setting, as you can see, is on low. And to be honest, I had some interference and I did not initially install the choke on my Humminbird Mega Live. So that's something that I can do next to work on, you know, reducing my interference. But one of the things that is going to be a much simpler try is the next time I go out onto the water and I saw a post on one of the Facebook Humminbird forms where somebody said, oh, I don't know where the interference thing is. Well, it's in the accessories tab and it's right here. And I did not change this when I was out on the water. So I have the options of off and you can see that the image changed a little bit here. I'm going to go to low, medium and high. And it, it didn't really change that image a whole lot because this is a good image. You're not getting interference. However, if you have a little suspect wiring job and it's just a minor problem, maybe you have a, a, just a tiny bit of interference, then by setting this interference rejection up to a higher level, it may simply reduce all your interference and you're good to go and you don't have to adjust any wiring. So it's certainly an easy fix that I am going to try the next time I am on the water. And I strive to get the best quality images that I can. And that is going to be a really simple, quick test to see if that's going to solve my little bit of interference problems. If you get to a point where you're frustrated with your playing with the settings, you're not, you're just not getting it dialed in. One of the things that you can do is you can go down to the bottom and you can restore Mega Live settings. Just simply hit the right cursor arrow and it's going to say reset all Mega Live settings to the factory default. And if you say yes, then it has restored it to the factory default. And you know that that is always a great starting point when you are learning to dial in your settings. Let's go back to simulation mode. So we're gonna exit out of that and we are going to 
exit out of that. We can exit out of that and we can just hold the view button. We could have done that right away too, but anyways, it just shows you how to exit out of things. And let's go down to the Mega Live view. And there we are. And from here, now we can start to play with the different features. Just like other forms of sonar, by hitting the menu button, we are going to get the Mega Live Express menu. And right now you can see the Mega Live pinging is on, which you obviously need to have that. And we're only getting that because of simulation mode. We could not do this with the motor in the stowed position because the wet switch is not activated in the water. So that one's pretty straightforward. Jumping down to Mega Live mode. Right now it is in currently in automatic, which means that it is going to pick the forward, down, or landscape mode, depending on where your transducer is. However, you can also go to manual, and you can see now that we've gone into the down imaging mode, and you have the picture coming from downwards. We can switch into forward mode, and the picture is coming from this way and we have a nice stable bottom with that on pitch and roll that we talked about earlier and you can see the images there and we also have landscape mode and you can see some fish swimming around here in landscape mode and it just gives you the different options of going through automatic versus manually setting it to down forward or landscape Moving on, let's go to down display mode and it is going to give you different ranges. It is going to give you the option of narrow, full or wide. Full is going to reveal a little bit more information than narrow. So there's a narrow version of it and you don't see quite as much of the outside of the tree there and going to full. Once you, again, you see a little bit more width here. And if you go to wide, you can see all of the tree here and the structure of the tree here. So if you wanted to concentrate on watching your bait and your those fish are directly underneath the boat, then I would definitely try narrow mode because that is going to give me the most detail. If I am searching new areas, I certainly want to get maximum detail so that I can learn exactly what's going on on the spot. And I can always switch to narrow later once I've got the spot targeted and zeroed in. Whenever you are adjusting settings, sensitivity and contrast are going to be your two biggest players. And take notice of the factory settings that they are both set at 10. And that is always a great starting point with the factory settings and just play from there. If I were to say to you with any of your sonar settings, play with sensitivity and contrast and between those two, you will generally be able to dial the units in very, very well. Let's take a closer look at sensitivity. So we see the setting is at 10 and let's just fire it up let's go to 11 12. we can see the image is getting a little hotter and whiter and at 16 they are starting to the fish are starting to blend together so you're losing some of the definition you can still clearly tell they are fish and let's go all the way up to 20 and you can still see the bait and the fish rising up but everything just kind of looks hot and you know different people have different preferences for settings so what might look good to you may not look good to me but let's go back and compare so you've got a good idea of how hot those images are let's go back to 10 and you can see some separation between the fish and you know maybe a little bit more definition so that is that direction. Let's decrease the sensitivity. And you can see the fish are harder to see. That was quite a good group of fish and you can still see them. However, it's definitely not as clear 
as when you got back to 10. So it's one of those things that you are just going to have to play with the adjustments. And I like that because I can see the separation of the fish and, you know, there's good contrast between the background and that. So that is your starting point from the factory defaults at 10. And depending on the body of water and, you know, the clarity of the water, you may have to up or lower that depending. Decreasing the sensitivity too much will make it difficult to see the bait. So when you are adjusting your sensitivity levels, you may want to focus on your bait more so than the fish as that could be your determining step for your sensitivity level adjustment. Contrast is next. And the contrast is going to give you as it says, contrast between the background and the image itself. So let's take a closer look. We are going to notice that it's at 10 and we are going to start adjusting 11, 12, there's 15, 17, 18, 19, 20. One of the things I have noticed with down imaging and Mega Live in the brief time I have had it out on the water, the higher I go in terms of contrast, it generally will clear up the background more. So you're not getting some of that interference in the background as much. Let's just backtrack it now. And once again, this is a good image, but if you are getting some cloudy images by adjusting it higher, you can generally get rid of that fuzzy cloudy image. But we're going to go back to 10 and then let's go the other way. And now you're seeing a lot more clutter there. And that's kind of what I was talking about you get some of this background cloudy images and I, I, I'm going to call it distortion. And obviously that is at the very low side at setting number one. As I go higher, you will see that this cloud will start to disappear and your images become a lot crisper. So I have found I tend to like to increase my contrast a lot more than I tend to decrease it. So I generally I will go up and I may find that 12, 13, 14. I just need to look and see what good what really looks good to me. And, you know, once I am happy with the image, then I leave it there. And, you know, and as I move to another body of water, I know I'm going to have to change that. In a given day, if the wind kicks up and the water becomes cloudier or the wind dies down and becomes clearer, I may have to adjust it as well. But for sure, sensitivity and contrast are two that I always, always play with when I am trying to dial in my sonar settings. The sensitivity and contrast will show you different things. The higher the sensitivity, it is going to display weaker returns. And the higher the contrast, it's going to show more definition between the light and the dark returns. The general rule for sensitivity is to Remember that when you are operating in clear water, you can increase the sensitivity to show weaker returns. And when you are in muddy or murky water, you will decrease the sensitivity. Dynamic contrast is designed to automatically enhance the contrast of the selected color palette. If dynamic contrast is turned on, the contrast will be automatically adjusted. Here are your options for dynamic contrast. Right now it is off and I have option one 
And when I was out on the water in the brief time, I kind of settled on option one versus option two. And again, it was a different set of circumstances. I mean, both look pretty good there. So there will be some automatic adjustment based on the color palette. And there's one. And there is dynamic contrast off. So not a lot of clear difference there, but definitely on the water, you may be able to take your dynamic contrast and turn it off. And looking back in hindsight, that is something that I wish I'd played with a little bit more in my brief time on the water, where I turned my dynamic contrast off so that when I was playing with the contrast, that I could dial it in and fine tune it as much as I possibly could. So that's something I will definitely try the next time I'm on the water. The dynamic contrast is currently turned off. So when I go to one, that is the dynamic contrast is turned on to setting one and turned on to setting two. So that is off and on has a choice of setting one or two. The downrange is set at 22 feet in simulation mode. And you can see, let's just exit out of that. You can see it's a nice full picture. If we go back into it and we went to auto, so let's go all the way to auto. You can see that it is preset at roughly about 30 feet here. And it's not a very detailed picture. In order to dial that in, you have to get out of auto and set it to a range that is just slightly deeper than the actual depth. And you can see it looks like it's 20 feet here. So by setting it at 22 feet, that would be just right. And that's why they set it there. So it really does help you dial it in. So let's go back to 22 feet. And you can see the bottom, if I'm at 17 feet, and I know some people lose the bottom on their sonars and it's because they've gone off of auto and they haven't adjusted it. And remember, you have to be slightly deeper than the bottom. So at 22 feet, the bottom's at 20 feet, we're slightly deeper and we exit out and we get a really nice big full picture. If we had our setting, deeper let's say let's say about 50 feet and there at 50 feet you can see that we have a tiny picture now obviously in simulation mode they don't have the full range here but you get the idea it would be a very small picture so by once again going slightly deeper than the bottom that is going to help you get the best possible picture and obviously improve the quality by giving you a nice big full image. Mega Live Colors, or as I refer to them as color palettes, is up to you what's your best personal preference. I mean, the old saying, beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. What looks good to you may not look good to me, and what looks good to me may not look good to you. Uh, typically, I like the color palettes two and four, but for the video sake, let's just take a scan through them. So there's one, two, three, four. I definitely have a preference of two over four, whereas in Mega 360, I really like the four, but that's just me. Five, six, seven, Oh, sorry, went by. There's eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and that's it. Just play with them. Uh, some people I've heard like eight. I actually used seven just briefly, and it was better on the water than what it looks like here. And there's four, which I, as I say, like for Mega360. Three is pretty good. It's nice and bright. Two is the default setting. So there's one. 
up to you. You decide what's best for you. I have been concentrating on this video in down mode, but I certainly could have chosen forward mode as I have done here. So if I hit the menu, I'm gonna get, a, get the express menu again. You can see the pinging is on, it's in forward mode. Um, forward display mode, it's in automatic. I could change that to forward. And if I did, I have some options here. You can see I have a 20 degree display mode, a 30 degree display mode, a 40 degree display mode, 50 degree display mode, 60. And that is the maximum. And if you read in the operations manual, it does say that it goes up to a maximum of 60 degrees. So there are different options within the different categories or modes so that down will have its express menu and forward will have its express menu. And similarly, landscape will have an express menu for it as well. You will recall from my earlier video on the install and setup that each click of the Mega Live transducer is 10 degrees. So if you start at zero degrees and you go from the D that is marked, then you go four clicks to 40 degrees. That would be the forward display mode, the F that is marked on your transducer. So if you change out of automatic mode, if you have the transducer set at 40 degrees, make sure that you match the forward display mode to 40 degrees as well. In the forward mode, you can see that sensitivity and contrast, the default setting is at 10. And coming down here, the dynamic contrast just is off there and has a one and two on setting, just like the down. Let's exit out of there. Go back to the menu for the express menu. You can see that right now the forward range is set on automatic, so that's the distance out. I can change that. So let's say I wanted to go to, so it's a 10 now. Let's say I wanted to go to 100 feet just for, whoops, went by that. And there's 100 feet, so you can see. Well, let's exit out of that so we can see it. And you can see a different uh, perspective there. Like anything else, if you want to get more detail, then you're going to reduce the range. So if I take my menu button and I go now, let's say, let's say I bring that to 40 feet. So that is going to, and we'll exit out so you can see it. So now that is going to give me some additional detail in there as well. So there is lots of flexibility as to how you set it. And we can just see the different perspective. We've got the fish swimming around in here. And that's just a quick look at forward mode. Looking at the downrange and forward mode, we can see that we are set at approximately 18 feet here. If I wanted to make this picture look bigger, then I can adjust this. So we are gonna go to, I said 18 feet, so let's try 20 feet. And now, exit out of that. Now we can see a very different perspective. It's a much bigger, broader image, and I, I like it a whole lot more. I don't like an image that is from here up. If I can get this and maximize it, then I'm always going to try and do that. So right now we see it again, it's at 18 feet. And let's just look at it again. It says I'm at 20 feet. And this is where you really kind of get dialing it in. And now I'm at 19, 18. So let's leave it at 18. It seems to be showing us the bottom there. So we exit out of it. And the picture is just simply bigger and better. So if you've questioned how can you dial things in, look at that, there's the bait going down there. Let's see, oh, there's a fish on it, I think. Nope, the bait's coming up here. Yep, working the bait right there, a fish is looking at it. And you can just see the difference in the quality of the image just by changing the range size. When you rely on automatic, you are not going to get as detailed as an image. And 
we put all this money into these units. Let's get the most out of them by utilizing the tools that are at our disposal here. And playing in simulation mode, as you just saw, is a great way to dial in your units. For curiosity's sake, let's take a look at the Mega Live colors in forward mode. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and let's go back, take a quick look at one, and there's the default setting at two since we've shifted to forward mode let's just continue on from here and it's just giving you another perspective we're not going to do landscape mode because the video would just be too long but uh, let's just continue on as the persistence mode is off and if i take it and i turn it on what it's going to do is it's going to leave a little color trail so there's the bait there and we're watching the bait come up and down and we can see a little color trail of the bait moving up and down and the fish following it and you can see the direction that the fish has traveled from the bait went back up to the top and so it may be easier to track it there is persistence mode off there is low there is medium so it's a little you know brighter streak easier to see um, potentially if you were trying to track your bait you might want to use the persistence mode a little bit more you know even off in the distance here you can see some fish moving around with some persistence mode and high again is just leaving a bigger mark or color track i know you can see it's uh pretty pretty hot there on high kind of thing and it's showing showing a lot that's a little too much for my liking but i can definitely see you know the the purpose of persistence mode and it is certainly something that i am going to play with it i do like the idea of being able to track your bait a little bit easier with persistence mode once again you see it coming down there good timing so it's definitely something to play with the range grid feature let's go down to it will now give you a just a grid basically like think of it like a graph right there's your zero so that's right underneath the boat this is five feet from the boat 10 feet 15 and so on let's just turn that off get it out of there and so now you can see the bait is going down at about eight feet from the boat uh, you can definitely see some fish moving here from about 20 feet so maybe when they heard that splash they're coming in to investigate so it just gives you a more accurate detail and it is not something that I used in my first time out with the unit but I really like that range grid and it's definitely something that I feel will enhance my fishing in terms of figuring out exactly what distance to cast and with the grid there it's pretty simple and straightforward and easy to figure out so it's going to be an addition to my selections when I do hit the water the next time. The final option is to record Mega Live. So you could record this and go back and look at it later. And quite frankly, it's something that I'm going to look into for my YouTube channel because if I record the image and I can play it back and I'm not being bounced around in the waves, I can probably videotape it then and just get a better quality image and i think that can be the subject of another video but unfortunately i think it's going to have to wait until after this winter unless i'm able to get out and use some of it ice fishing then i may be able to do it that way but we will see how that works out just be aware that if i do go with the record mega live option i am going to need an sd card in there and it says that a chart card like i have a lake master chip in there i can't record on it uh, but I do have individual SD cards for the different lakes that I fish, so I would be able to record on that chip with my waypoints. So I do have that option, and it, as I said earlier, it's something I am certainly going to explore. Just before I wrap up the video, let's just switch it to landscape mode and I'm going to exit out of that. I'm now in landscape mode. Uh, one of the videos I did watch from somebody else was 
that uh, when you add persistence mode in landscape, you can see that there's some purple, there's some fish moving around because it tended to be harder to see, but if you're just strictly looking for fish in landscape mode, then putting that persistence mode on is something that will definitely help. But let's just take a quick look at the express menu and you can see that there is sensitivity contrast, dynamic contrast, landscape range, colors, persistence, range, grid, and record make alive. So it is very similar to the express menus for down mode for and forward mode. When you play with your hummingbird unit in simulation mode, you are doing absolutely no damage to the transducers in any way, shape or form. And when you go to a trade show and you go into the hummingbird booth, the units are always set up in simulation mode for that reason. So it is a great opportunity to play with your units and to learn how to dial them in. I hope that I have proven that to you in this video and I certainly learned a lot myself and I have definite ideas of what I want to do the next time on the water. So as always, if you find the video enjoyable or helpful, a like, share, subscribe is always very much appreciated. Before we totally wrap this up, let's go back to the down mode and we've added the range grid and we've added the persistence mode. You can see the bait going up and down there. And it's just been a really cool learning experience for me and, and hopefully for you as well. And I really appreciate those of you taking the time to watch. I know some of my videos are lengthy, but I do try to be very detailed in how I get my images dialed in to the best of my ability. So if you have any questions or comments, I always invite them. And once again, thank you for watching and take care. Bye for now. Whoops, just one more thing. Just so you know how to get out of simulation mode, as you fire up the unit the next time, you are going to let it fire up. And when you get the message here, press menu for startup options, you hit menu and you want to go to normal. And once you hit normal and then exit, it will go back to its regular setup and will not go into simulation mode. So that should help in case you were concerned as to how to do that.